Here's a fun thing you can try. Get out your old NES, pop in Super Mario Brothers, and turn it on. Then pop out the cartridge without turning off the console and pop in tennis. Use the reset button to start the game, start a new match, and play for a few seconds. Make sure that the music has stopped playing and you move your player around a bit afterwards. Then pop out this cartridge without turning off the console and put Super Mario Bros. back in using the reset button again to boot it up. Then hold A and press start. World 9-1? What? So there's a lot to take in at once here, so let's take it one step at a time. Holding A while pressing start at the title screen is a real feature of the game. Its intended mechanic is to let you restart at the start of a world you were in if you had a game over. For example, if you got a game over in level 6-3, if you hold A while pressing start at the title screen, you would start at level 6-1 instead of 1-1. This means that somehow the game Tennis is corrupting this value, which lets you start at some random world instead. This value doesn't even have to correspond to the eight worlds in the game, which means you can get to world nine, worlds A through Z, and a bunch of level numbers that use glitched tiles instead of numbers or letters. The way this corruption works and how it is allowed to happen is very interesting, so we'll take a deep look into exactly what's going on. And the fact that Tennis is pretty much the only game that allows this is a very big coincidence, as we'll soon see the quite bizarre requirements to get this to work. The biggest question that really comes up is, how is one game able to even affect the other at all? How can data be written to memory by one game, stay there when no game is in the console, and then be read by the second game? Well, this is why it helps to eject the games out of the console without turning it off first. When data is written to memory, it is stored on some sort of RAM chip. That RAM chip needs to be receiving power from the console in order to function properly. The moment that the RAM chip loses power, the data it holds starts to decay. And by decay, I mean that it slowly starts to convert into some default value that corresponds to the chip's resting state, which can be different per chip and even per memory cell on the same chip. However, this process happens slowly, so if power is lost only for a small amount of time, the chances that any data value becomes lost diminishes. If you're fast enough at pulling out cartridges and putting them back in, it's possible you can properly turn off the console in between each swap. It's just easier to leave the system on. Even with an original NES with a CIC that will flip the power on and off continuously when there's no game inserted, it keeps the power running long enough that this is possible. Of course, any time the system doesn't have power is a small chance for memory to decay anyway, so there's always a chance it won't work. So, Tennis uses the same memory location that corresponds to the world number in Super Mario Bros. It changes it from World 6 or whatever to something like World 9. How does this not happen way more often? Does no other game use this particular memory location at all? In other words, how does Super Mario Bros. know not to let you start at a random world number the first time you turn it on? Here's a hint. This is why you need to boot up Mario first before playing tennis. Super Mario Bros. actually checks for a warm start when it turns on. A warm start is when the game starts up just after a reset, sometimes called a soft reset. This is opposed to a cold start when the game is first inserted into the console, or if you press the power button off and on again, called a hard reset. If the game detects a cold start, all of memory is wiped fresh. This would mean anything that was written to memory by a previous game is overwritten with zeros. This includes the starting world number. It gets set to zero, which corresponds to world one. If the game detects a warm start, however, not all of memory is wiped. There is a small section of 41 bytes that aren't wiped out, they retain whatever memory values existed before the soft reset, which, you guessed it, contains that starting world number. That doesn't explain why this doesn't happen all of the time, though. We have to look at how the game determines if it is booting up from a cold start or warm start situation. First, let's take a look at those 41 bytes and see what they're used for. 
Most of them are used for the digits displayed on the status bar. The first six bytes correspond to the six digits of the top score displayed on the title screen. The score can actually be seven digits, but the last digit is always a zero, so it doesn't need to be kept track of. The next set of six bytes are the six digits of Mario's current score. The next set of six are Luigi's current score. The next set of six are Mario's coin count. While only the last two digits are displayed, the other four are there, just hidden. Same for the next six bytes, which are Luigi's coin count. The next set of six bytes are the number of seconds left on the timer, of which only the last three are shown. This leaves five bytes. These two bytes are actually unused. This byte is used as a flag to determine whether or not you can use the B button to cycle through the worlds on the title screen. This is a normal functionality that is enabled after beating the game. The next byte is the starting world number byte. This is what world you start on if you hold A while pressing start on the title screen, minus one. This last byte though is the special byte. When the game starts up, it writes the special value of hex A5 here, and it stays like that as long as the game is on. Before it does that though, it checks if the value is already hex A5. If it was already A5, then it's likely that the game was just previously running and only the reset button was pressed. If it wasn't A5, then it knows to treat this like a cold start and wipe all of the memory. Now, just checking one byte isn't that great of a scheme, because there's a good chance that some other game uses this memory location and just so happens to set it to hex A5. Or maybe the default resting state of this particular memory cell on a particular memory chip happens to be A5, and so it will always read A5 on a cold start. This is why the game also checks the six bytes that correspond to the top score. Since these bytes correspond to decimal digits, they should always consist of the values 0 through 9. Therefore, the game checks if any of these values are hex A or higher. If any of them are, then it determines this is a cold start. Therefore, the conditions for a warm start are that these six bytes stay within the range 0 to 9, and that this byte is exactly A5. If this is the case, then the starting world number will not be erased. So now I've explained the how part of the process, but it wouldn't be odd to ask at this point, why? Why does the game have to check for a warm start? The starting world byte is only written to after a game over, or beating the game. So it's not like this would help if you got all the way to world 7 and a lightning strike caused your console to reset briefly. The reason is actually quite simple. After a game over, or beating the game, the game essentially completely resets itself, which includes checking for a cold or warm start again. Of course, this will always be detected as a warm start, since none of the memory has any time to decay at all. And at this point, the top score digits are valid from the previous playthrough, and the hex A5 byte is still there from last time too. And then at the title screen, it's able to detect the flag for choosing a world and the starting world from the previous playthrough as well. So now you can maybe see why tennis is the only game that can do this. Any game you would want to do this trick with would need to either keep the six digits of the top score between zero and nine, or just not touch these memory values at all. It would also need to keep the hex A5 value there, which means it either needs to set it to A5 itself or just not touch that memory address. And then in order to start at whatever world you wanted, the game needs to use the memory address where Super Mario Bros. stores the starting world. It's just a lot of particular stuff that is theoretically very easy to do, but in practice very very few games are potential candidates. Most games always wipe all of the memory, no matter if it's coming from a cold start or a warm start, so those are automatically no good since they destroy that A5 value and any game that doesn't wipe memory, or doesn't even use any of the memory around this location, is unlikely to only use the specific location where the continue world value is held. Let's see what exactly is going on in memory when we try this trick. First, we pop in Super Mario Bros. for the first time and start the game. Here we see that the game detects a cold start and all of the memory values we are interested in get reset to zero. The game timer is actually set to 401 on the title screen, 
and then that last byte is set to hex A5 right away. We only need Mario here at the start to get that A5 value, so at this point we can swap over to Tennis. Tennis is one of the smaller set of games that doesn't completely wipe out memory when it starts up. As its title jingle plays, it uses 6 bytes in this range, but it leaves everything else alone. We start up a match and are ready to serve the ball and nothing has changed yet. But as soon as we start playing, we see two more values get used. The byte we are interested in slowly increments as you run around the court. This value is used by the game to play the footstep sounds your character makes as you walk around. Each footstep sound will increment this value by one. You can actually control this very easily by tapping a button on the d-pad very gently. This also explains why the value doesn't change until the music stops. The footstep sounds aren't played if the music is still going. Since this value started at zero, since Super Mario Bros. cleared it, it only takes a little bit of walking around to get this value above 7, which corresponds to worlds greater than 8. Notice here that Tennis does not even touch any of the bytes that correspond to the top score digits in Mario. At this point, we can pop out Tennis and put Super Mario Bros. back in. The top score digits are all 0, since they were cleared the first time we put Mario in, and the special hex A5 byte is still there, since Tennis didn't touch it, so the game deems this as a warm start and doesn't zero out any of the values here. We now have Super Mario Bros. running where this starting world value is 8. So holding A and pressing start will start at level 9-1. So why does level 9-1 look like level 6-2 but underwater? To answer that question, you'll have to look forward to part 2 of this 3-part miniseries. In the next video, we'll look at how all of the levels are stored in the game's ROM. Thank you for watching.